This is part 75 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss remote validation with an example. Remote validation allows a controller action method to be called using client-side script. This is very useful when we want to call a server-side method without a full page postback. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. Consider this user registration page. For a user to be able to create a user account on our website, they need to provide email which is their username and then a password. We want to ensure the email address is unique. If we try to use an email address that's already used by another user, then we want to display this validation error message. Email prajim at prajimtech.com is already in use. From the performance standpoint, it's more efficient to do this validation on the server than on the client machine. To be able to do this validation on the client machine, we'll have to send all the registered email addresses onto the client machine. Imagine if we have 1 million registered users, then we'll have to send 1 million email addresses from the server onto the client machine, which is a horrible idea. This is one use case where remote validation is extremely useful. With remote validation, as soon as the user types a valid email address in this email address field, we take that email address and pass it on to a server-side function, which checks if that email address is already taken by another user. If that's the case, we display this validation error. Otherwise, we allow the user account to be created. So our first natural step is to create a server-side function that takes this provided email address and checks if it's already taken by another user. We are going to include that function in the account controller. That function declaration is going to be very similar to this register function declaration. So let's make a copy of this and then change the name of the function. To keep it meaningful, let's call the method is email in use and we want to pass the email as a parameter. The data type is string and let's call the parameter email. We want this method to respond to both HTTP POST and HTTP GET requests. It's already decorated with HTTP POST. We also want it to respond to HTTP GET, so let's also decorate it with HTTP GET. We can either specify both the attributes like this or use accept verbs attribute and then specify both HTTP GET and POST actions as strings. If you're wondering why does this method need to respond to HTTP GET, well that's because as we type user email address in this email field, the client side script issues a GET request to the server. So that's the reason we want this method to respond to HTTP GET. It is usually those users who does not have a login account yet uses this registration page to create a new user account. These users are not logged in. They are anonymous. So these anonymous users should be able to reach this controller action method. And that's exactly the reason why we decorated this method with allow anonymous attribute. Now to be able to check if this provided email is already taken by another user, we are going to use this injected user manager service. On this service, we have find by email async method to this method. Let's pass the incoming email address as a parameter. And this is an async method, so let's await it. And whatever result that we are getting back, if you notice from the IntelliSense, this method returns task of identity user as the result. Let's store it in a variable. I'm going to call the variable user. If this user variable is null, then that means we do not have users registered with this provided email address. So in this case, we want to allow the user account to be created. So first, let's check if user is null. If user is null, then the provided email is not in use. So let's return JSON result. To return JSON result, we use JSON function. And to this, let's pass true. Notice the return type of this JSON method from IntelliSense. It is JSON result. Now, if you're wondering, why are we returning JSON result from this server-side function? Well, that's because ASP.NET Core MVC uses jQuery validate method 
to call this server side function so as we type user email address into this email field sp.net core mvc uses jquery validate method to call this server side function the jquery validate method actually issues an ajax call to this method and the jquery validate method expects a json response from this method and that's the reason we are returning json result so if user is null then that means we don't have validation errors so we are returning json of true else the email is already in use so let's return a validation error message i'm going to use c sharp 6 string interpolation email the provided email is already in use this method as you can see is a very straightforward method it takes an email address and verifies if it is already taken by another user or not if it's not taken by another user we return json of true to indicate there are no validation errors otherwise we return this validation error message our next step is to tell asp.net core mvc to call this server side method as we type email address in this email field before we do that let's look at the behavior that we have at the moment i'm going to use the email address prajim at prajimtech.com i know this email address is already in use but notice we do not have any validation errors let's also confirm the password but when i click register this is when we see this validation error username prajim at prajimtech.com is already taken but we do not want to wait until we click the register button to see this validation error as we type the email address in the email field that's when we want to see this validation error message for that we want to be able to call this server side method for that we are going to use the remote attribute but where are we going to use the remote attribute well we are going to use it on this email property of our register view model let's bring in the required namespace if you're wondering why are we using the remote attribute on the email property of register view model class well that's because for this register view the model is this register view model class and this email UI field is bound to this email property that's the reason we're using remote attribute on the email property of our register view model now we want to tell this remote attribute to call this action method is email in use so we have to specify its name as a parameter to the remote attribute so let's use the named parameter action and the name of the method is is email in use and we also need to specify the name of the controller the controller in which this method is present is account controller so let's also specify that here notice now as i type the email address we know prajim at prajimtech.com is already in use as soon as i tab away from it we immediately get the validation error email prajim at prajimtech.com is already in use if i change this to prajim at prajimtech.com the validation error disappears if i remove one we get the validation error back implementing remote validation in asp.net core is straightforward in our case we want to check if the provided email is in use or not so our first step is to implement a server side method that takes email as a parameter and verifies if that email is in use or not next we need to tell asp.net core mvc to issue an ajax call to this server side method using client side scripts for that we use the remote attribute pointing it to this action method another very important point to keep in mind is for the remote validation to work we need these three client side libraries in the order that is specified right here in our project we are loading these three client side script libraries in our layout view as you can see right here if these three script files are not present or if they are loaded in a different order remote validation will not work that's it in this video thank you for listening